Hi, welcome to Salt City Knits. I'm Emily, and this is a podcast all about my making life, mostly knitting today. And today is episode 17. It's the 12th of September. It's another beautiful Tuesday, absolutely gorgeous here. And just please forgive me, my air conditioning is on and oh, I think it might be turning off right now. I know that was on last week. It bugged me. I don't know if it bugged anybody else, but um, we're still pretty warm here in Utah. So nice, cool evenings and mornings, but plenty warm during the day. Definitely still need the AC, at least for my comfort. So I am hosting a knit along for the months of September and October, and this is the Salt City Knits Shawl Along or SCK Shawl Along. So it's just where we knit shawls in, in September and October as we are getting ready for this awesome fall weather that hopefully will be coming along our way at some point, at least for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. And, um, Anyway, so I hope you'll join me and post your works in progress, your finished objects. You can be knitting, you can be crocheting, um, but just any shawls that you would like to make during the months of September and October. So today I have a little bit of a life update. I have um, finished objects, works in progress, and um, I'm gonna give you a tour of my knitting basket, a tour. I don't know why I even described it that way. Talk to you about my knitting basket and then um, some reading, just things that I'm reading right now. So life update. Um, I had knit night. Was that just a week ago? It seems like longer ago already. It was so great. We meet um, on Wednesdays, not every Wednesday, but of course once a month uh, we meet on a Wednesday and we just have the best group of ladies in our knit group. And um, it's a, I don't know, I, I like, it's a perfect size of group. It's just the perfect combination of people. And it was just so amazing to get together. And in September, we do a swap where it's just, um, like a uh, craft supplies, like if things that you're de-stashing, like a de-stash swap. And this time I did not pull things out to de-stash. I just had not had time to go through things. And I did do a fairly significant de-stash about six, eight months ago. Um, so I had already really cleared through a lot of things. Of course, I've got a lot more stuff since then. <laughs> So I didn't take anything to de-stash. However, I did pick some stuff up. So I had to show you just some fun things. First of all, I got these two little extra bits um, that were leftovers for somebody else, but aren't they so pretty? And I think would go together just beautifully. They're both a sock yarn. Anyway, those were really fun. And I thought they might be fun to add into you know, other scrappy projects and things like that. So um, I just picked those up. I got a couple of, oh, I dropped my sock blockers. Hold on. I grabbed these two minis that, those are from Deborah Candy Shop Yarns. And I think these are her Cherry Cola colorway. And she just had a bunch of them that she had dyed. Maybe, I don't know if they were just not quite right or, or what it was, or if she just had an excess of them, but she was de-stashing some of those. So I picked those up. And then I grabbed these two skeins as well. And this one is not labeled. It looks to me like maybe Dragon Horde yarn. I don't know, but it's so pretty. Look at that. And then this one, this one is labeled. This one is BU Fibers. Let's see if I can get, there we go, BU Fibers. And it's a sport weight. But isn't that just really pretty? Oh, come on. <laughs> I have to block my face. If I block my face, it works. Just a fun one. I really like it. The colorway is something. It doesn't actually say. 
Oh, sweet iris. Yes, it does. Right there. I don't know. So those are really fun additions that I snagged at the um, D-Stash swap. There were lots of gorgeous things on that table, but I did limit myself. So that was good. Also, I, I know I mentioned this last week, but I've just in this time where I want to knit everything, knitting is bringing me so much joy right now. I mean, it always does, but there are times where I kind of, you know, you, I start to take it for granted a little bit. Um, but I have been romanticizing my knitting life. I don't know if any, if you do this, I find that these are some essential elements for romanticizing your knitting for me. I love having an audiobook or good music playing candles, of course, um, fresh flowers. I actually didn't bring them in because they're dropping pollen like crazy right now. We have a ton of wild sunflowers around um, my area right now. And my cute 18 year old son brought me a bouquet on Sunday. And so I've had this bouquet of fresh wild sunflowers in my house that has just been such a joy. Um, but like I said, they're dropping pollen like crazy. I have them on this, like I put a napkin underneath them and it's like, it, it's just yellow all around on it. So I did not want to carry it around wearing a black shirt because then it would end up all over me. Um, baked goods, obviously a necessity. And since I am not eating sugar and I'm not eating like many carbohydrates right now, I have found... Um, Duncan Hines makes a keto brownie mix that is pretty amazing. It's pretty great. So every once in a while, that is a fantastic little treat to add to it. And then of course you have to have something yummy to drink. In addition to your knitting, of course, or your crocheting, whatever it is that you're making, I just find that you add some little touches and it's like, suddenly you're not just knitting, you're knitting in a movie. <laughs> so that's been, that's been fun. I've been doing that almost every day with my knitting time is taking some time to like give myself that fun little setup to make it perfect and feel like, ah, oh, this is the life. Even though it might be work, stuff that I'm working on for work, it is great. Like I don't feel like I'm working. It's wonderful. So Anyway, what am I missing any essentials on that list? What are some of your essentials that you have to have for your romanticized knitting experience? I'd love to hear it. Please share in the comments below. Okay, let's talk about all the socks from the sock tubes. I mentioned last week that I had three sock tubes, two were partials that were left over from other projects and one was a full one. And I want to give you a status update on that. That is, um, other than things I can't show because they're either new designs or they are um, for my secret swap, that's what I've been knitting on for the last week, for sure. So I'm gonna put these on blockers because I have not blocked these yet. And while the knitting for, like I'm gonna show you this one for example, the knitting for this sock, that sock tube is lovely and even, but it's hard to get the picture of the full sock. I don't know, I guess you kind of can, but you know, it's other things are kind of crumply. So I'm gonna put it on a sock blocker to show them off. So I finished the first, this first one is done. And these ended up being the right size for my son-in-law. I'm putting on a kind of a medium size blocker and there's quite a bit of room more. It's just, yeah, like it's hanging off the toe there. <clears throat> um, but in addition to that, this tube was cranked at a little bit of a looser gauge than the other two. So even though it's a 64 stitch tube, it really fits more like a 72. But I think it turned out great. It's not a super tall sock, but it, he's gonna love it. He is like the biggest fan of my handmade socks. I mean, he absolutely loves them. And I've only made him two pairs so far. 
So these will be for him. I think these turned out so great. So finish both of those. And so I, my first step that I did was I cut the, I separated it into the two pieces. Um, for this one, one end of my sock tube was on scrap yarn. The other end um, was still had part of that waste yarn tube attached to it that needed to be unraveled. So both were on basically on waste yarn. And so I left those ends on waste yarn to begin with and I separated them and then I think I knit both the toes, then I knit both the cuffs and then I went in and cut in and did both of the heels. Now I wanna show you that cuff. I did a sewn bind off and even though I knit it in two by two rib, I think that sewn bind off looks great. I mean, I think a sewn bind off looks better on one by one rib, but I really don't care for the look of one by one rib. In general, I, I mean, I like twisted rib in one by one, but one by one ribbing kind of looks a little bit sloppy to me. It's just not my favorite. And so I prefer, I just like two by two a lot better. It looks like I knit one of my hairs into this cuff. That is not surprising. So anyway, but I think it looks pretty great. It's um, pretty tidy. It doesn't gap and flare. When I take it off the blocker, and again, this isn't blocked yet, so you can see it's a little bit ruffly there, but it is not bad at all. Sorry, I'm still working on the focus. Finding the perfect spot for the focus, okay. So that was my first pair that I did, and I think they turned out so great. And I had my son try them on, and he and my son-in-law wear the same size, and they fit my son great. So those will be for my son-in-law. All right, and then the second one I did, again, this was a partial sock tube. And I kind of, did I switch the minis that I used? No, I think I used the same ones I originally planned. No, I think I switched them. I don't know. This I don't remember if this is what I originally planned. They're so fun. I love how cute they are. And then again, there's that one by one, or yeah, that sewn bind off in a two by two rib. So they turned out so fun. Um, this is Candy Shop Yarns. I forgot to mention this one, the main skein is Candy Shop Yarns in the Whorehound colorway. And then I used minis from my stash. And then same, this one's also Candy Shop Yarns and it is animal cookies, circus, circus animals, animal cookies, animal crackers, circus animals, something, circus animals. Something like that. You know, the ones with the pink and the white frosting and the sprinkles, that one. <laughs> these are so fun. And these are definitely for my daughter, Aria. These are, just say her name. She is such, she has such a childlike enthusiasm for everything. And um, I have a great desire to find her some light up shoes. She would be so happy if I could find her some light up shoes, but just to give you an idea, these are so her color. So I finished both of those. I did the same exact method for the construction, separated them out first, knit both the toes, knit both the cuffs, then went and did the heels. And these are at a tighter gauge than the first ones. So these definitely wear like a size 64 that stitch, I keep dropping things, 64 stitch um, sock that I would hand knit. It matches my gauge. I think the only thing I noticed different about this gauge on the sock, the circular sock knitting machine from my hand knitting is that I think the row gauge is a little bit longer. Is that right? Am I saying the right, am I saying that right? Yeah, I think the row gauge is just a little bit longer. Like the stitches per inch are the same, but it does have just a tiny bit more stretch than what my hand knit socks are. And I think that comes because the row gauge is a little bit bigger 
than my hand net gauge. Yeah. And so when you, that makes sense. Sorry, I had to processing this through. So when you pull it, you know, it's pulling your stitches down this way and out that way. And it gives it that extra little bit of give. Anyway, whatever it is, it's fine. It's great. I did try these on. They fit me really well. They were a teensy bit too long for me, which is perfect for my daughter. Her feet are just a little bit bigger than mine. So that is another pair. The next one was the full 100 grams cranked into a tube. So where those were just remnants of a tube that had been used for other things, the next one I'm actually making into two complete pair of socks. So the first pair I just finished this morning. I'm gonna again put these on the blocker. I think these are so cute. <laughs> They're so fun. Look at, oh my goodness. The contrast on the video compared to in person is even more vibrant. So here is this one. Isn't that just so fun? Oh my goodness, so fun. So this yarn is Knitterly Things and I don't have, I didn't have a label on it anymore. Um, my sister cranked this into a tube for me last year sometime and it did have a label on it, but I have misplaced it because that's, I'm just not always as organized as I would like to be. But I know it's Knitterly Things, one of her rainbows, obviously, but isn't that just so cute? And then this purple colorway is a one of a kind um, from Candy Shop Yarns, and it's a sparkle base. It's a, got Stellina in it. And I, it was a 50 gram skein. So I've been using that for the heels, toes, and cuffs for all four socks. So I'm basically making two completely matching pairs. Although the stripes are not matching from one pair to the other, they are pretty darn close to matching within each pair. So let me finish. I'll put this one on a blocker too to show you. I'm really pleased. I didn't, I didn't really think that that was going to happen, but it's worked out really well. Pretty darn close. Look at that. Yeah. So I'm really happy with how those have turned out. And um, this one was kind of funny because I had a tube I was splitting into four socks, but I only had my two sets of needles with me. So I split this pair from the other pair. So I split the whole tube into half and I knit a heel and a toe, or no, a, a toe and a cuff and a toe and a cuff. So I had basically two very long socks. Then I took one of those and I split. So it was like this toe and this cuff, you know, the toe for one sock and the cuff for the other one. Then I split them in half again and I knit the other toe and the other cuff. <laughs> and then I split for and cut in for the heels. And I have noticed when I make these heels, these afterthought heels, I'm trying to show this to see, there we go, that they do end up with a, a gap when I first make them, but I just use my end and tighten it up and they look great. This one might show a little better, let's see. But I just tightened, I like I kind of sewed it up inside and it works fantastic. So that's great. I'm really happy that that works out so well. And these are, um, these are like my regular height, if that's a word, length of leg that I like to do for socks for me. And um, one of these will probably be, be my pair and the other one will be a gift. Or maybe they'll both be gifts, I don't know. But here is where I am on the other pair. Let's see. So you can see here, I've got the one with the toe and this one is the one with the cuff. And I've started putting the cuff on this one and then I'll put the toe on this one and then I'll cut in for the heels. And again, if you look here, look how well they're matching up. So it's turning out really, really, really well. So in the end of this, I, I'll have these done by probably Thursday and Thursday I think is when I 
No, it was Wednesday. Anyway, in just over a week, I will have completed four pair of socks. Not something you can do all the time. Obviously, this is with um, using these sock tubes, um, but that is gonna be a great start or great boost to my Christmas gift stash that I'm trying to accumulate. Again, here is my contrast yarn that I'm using for everything and it is gonna work great. Like I said, 50, it was a 50 gram skein. So that meant I'm having enough, it's giving me 25 grams per pair, which is just about right. Cause I find that I use, I need more than 20 grams for um, heels and toes and cuffs for a whole pair of socks but it's not, it's, it's not a lot more. So I probably am going to use all of that or pretty darn close to it, but getting close. So I'll tell you what though, knitting in public, a lot of times we get questions, right? Knitting on sock tubes in public, people ask so many questions because they just can't figure it out. You know, when you're working on something that looks like a sock that's this long, <laughs> they're like, what exactly? Are you just making really long socks? They ask because they're like, I don't think that's what you're doing, but it sure looks like it. So anyway, I've had lots of fun conversations like at ch after church, a couple of ladies came up and asked me about, um, what, what exactly are you doing? <laughs> so I explained and they're like, well, why don't you just, I explained, you know, I'm cutting this up because it's too long and I'm putting, you know, heels and toes and cuffs for these socks in. And, um, and they're like, well, why didn't you just stop knitting it when it was the right size? So then I explained about a sock knitting machine. And anyway, they were, they really thought it was so fascinating. So that was really fun. So as far as works in progress go, I, I have secret stuff and then that pair of socks. So ho I'm really hoping that next week I can finally show you some secret things that I've been really excited to share. Um, I haven't worked on my Northeasterly blanket at all this week. I'm just gonna call it a Northeasterly. <clears throat> I'm actually not using the Northeasterly pattern. I mean, I talked about this project last week, right? Um, I'm not using that pattern, but I know the concept is very much the same as the Northeasterly. And I don't really have a pattern to share with you because I'm just kind of making it up. So we'll just call it a Northeasterly. I think you get what I'm saying. Scrappy knitted blanket. I haven't worked on it at all. All right. I want to show you my knitting basket. Let me move things a little bit. I need water. Okay. So I, I have um, a sewing room. I call it my sewing room downstairs. I spend way more time knitting in it than I do sewing. But I've always called my that room my sewing room. So it just, I don't know, <laughs> it's still called the sewing room. Sometimes I say it's my trailer, as in I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> I tell the kids that. Um, I know my friend Nikki, who is um, Clara Pegatty online, um, and I'll, I'll link her podcast below. She um, would call her, wasn't it the boat? I think she called her craft room the boat. Very similar to I'll be in my trailer. It's kind of like, well, we'll be on the boat. You know, it's kind of like this. Am I saying that right? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Anyway, but it's that whole idea of it being a refuge. But even though I have that room downstairs and that's where all my yarn storage is, it's where I store, store most of my tools and supplies and notions, pouches and project bags and all of those kinds of things. I don't want it. It's in the basement and it's a, it's a darling little room, but it doesn't have a ton of natural light. And, um, you know, I have kids at home still. I want to be in the main areas of the home. So I have a tendency, this chair right over here. This is my chair and I have my little like nest around me. I have a little table. It's a very small little table. I just pick it up and move it where I am going. Um, and then I have this basket and I'm gonna see if I can pick it up without banging the camera, but this is my basket and it's so cute. Isn't it just adorable? I got it at Home Goods, So it was 
not expensive and it is the perfect size to hold kind of the things that I want to access on an everyday basis. So I keep my current works in progress in their project bags. So like this has been my project bag for my um, sock tubes. This is a So Sweet Violet fall bag. I think it was last year or the year, I think it was two years ago. So adorable. And there is hair again, no surprise. My daughter also has um, hair past her waist that is just thick and naturally wavy. It's really unfair, actually. <laughs> she has the hair that I always wished I had, right? But there's always hair everywhere. So I have my project bags in here. I've got another one there that fell out already. but And then I also keep a, um, my main tools in here. So I have... Um, this case, which is all of my fixed circular needles. I don't use um, interchangeables. I use all pretty much always fixed circulars. And um, so I have this case in here. I think I've shown this before, but it is just awesome. So it's got little labels on it for the sizes. And I keep, yeah, so I keep that in there. And I'm trying to remember the name. I think it's, um, there's a label in here somewhere, isn't there? No? I will, link, I will link the maker for these below. She makes gorgeous um, organizing tools for your knitting projects. So she makes these cases and she makes um, like, they're kind of like a project bag, but they're DPN storage. And I think she even makes them where the bag, like this will fit inside of that. So you can have matching set. So you can have all your DPNs like stored in all these little labeled pockets all the way around the inside of the bag. And then your needle case can fit down inside. And anyway, they're gorgeous, but I really love that. So that's for my fixed circulars. Then I've got this case that I just bought on Amazon. Um, this one has all kinds of crochet hooks. So I've got, these are all like the ergonomic ones. It has some notions in there, which I pretty much never use those, but, um, and then it has like aluminum and steel hooks in the back. So it's got pretty, any crochet hook you could need is in here. There's a gauge, a needle gauge, some more notions in here. And I, it's just super handy to have this all just together in one place. Then I have, this is my DPN storage. I've got lots of little yarn ends in there. <laughs> so this is my DPN storage. And this was a gift from my kids, I think, one year. So it's one of these rolls. And it just has the flap. And I mostly use, um, what am I trying to say? Knit Pro Zings, that's what they are, they're Zings. I have some um, Haya Hayas in there and some Carbons as well, but I mostly use the Zings for DPNs. I don't use DPNs all the time. So I do tend to Ward's Magic Loop for a lot of things. But not everything. And I'll tell you what, like if I'm doing like an I-cord bind off or um, actually a lot of bind offs, I will pull out a DPN. So I am not trying to use a needle with a big old cable on it to be my working my right hand needle while I'm doing bind offs. I'll pretty much always grab a DPN for that. Um, and yeah, things like that. So even if I'm not knitting a whole project on DPNs, I will definitely pull them out pretty regularly for things like that. I also have a scale in here. I really wanna get one of those little pocket ones you can just stick in your project bag. I definitely need that. And then I have the detritus. So I also have like a pattern in here. Let's see, this one's the Musselberg hat. So, and I just kind of had it on the side just stuffed kind of down to the side. I don't usually store my patterns in here for very long. That's just, I haven't put it away yet. 
And then, like I said, there's like some pencils down in there, random stitch markers. I have a gift card <laughs> that I need to use down in there. And But I just pile all my project bags in and that sits next to my chair and it's so cute. And it's just my, the things that I can grab um, that, that I kind of need handy all the time. And then I go down to my sewing room for other things, you know, like when I'm ready to cast on a new project and I'll go and I'll kind of set my project bag up. I'll go and get pick out a project bag and get my yarn out and skein it up. My Swift and my winder are down there and grab, put a Notions tin in, you know, my pattern if I'm printing it will go in there. But then my tools are up here. So my needles and, and so on will be up here for me to come and grab. I also have a Notions tin um, that I just keep right on the shelf next to my chair. That's like a bigger tin. In fact, it's actually not there right now, but it normally is or else I would just grab it. I'll, I'll try to remember to show. I think I've shown it before, but it's this gorgeous two layer. It's almost like a bento box, but just a little one. Green floral tin that my sister gave me. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. So that one, it's kind of like, I know it has every single thing in it. Like I might not have a um, cable needle in every single Notions tin for every size, right? But that one's got everything in it. And so that one just kind of lives on that shelf right next to me. Um, Anyway, so that's just kind of fun. All right. So I wanted to talk about books. Um, this is not going to be any kind of a revelation to anybody <laughs> because the things that I am reading and wanting to read right now are the oldies but goodies, like the go back to you over and over again. And um, it was funny because it was last week sometime I think it was Thursday, my daughter and my grandson came over and they were just kind of hanging out for the day. And my other two kids that are at home, Isaac and Abby, they were around. And all of a sudden, just out of the blue, I said, that is it, I have had enough. I'm turning on Harry Potter. And they were all like, oh, thank heavens. And my son Isaac said, I started it yesterday. <laughs> Guess we were all just feeling like we need to read Harry Potter again. And so we turned on the Bluetooth speaker and just turned it on for everybody to listen to while we were hanging out together. And that didn't last for a super long time with us all doing it together, but it was really fun. So, um, but yeah, I am listening to the Harry Potter books again and I'm on book three now. It's amazing how fast I wanna go through those. I mean, they're not all super long, especially at the beginning of the series, right? Um, but just having so much fun. But I was telling Isaac, um, and my husband, I was telling them, the only problem with this is I'm not going to get through them all by September 22nd. They're like, why do you need to do it by September 22nd? Like, what's the deadline? And I'm like, well, September 22nd, I automatically have to start reading Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> I didn't do it last summer, or excuse me, last September, because um, we were, we did a two week long road trip um, at the end of September and into October. And so I didn't want to be listening to those because then everybody, anyway, I didn't, everybody wasn't going to want to listen to them at the same time. And I would really want to be focusing on it and stuff, but I love to start reading Fellowship of the Ring on set, start reading it on September 22nd. And for those of you who are not Lord of the Rings fans, um, September 22nd, there's a big birthday party at the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring, and it's Bilbo and Frodo's shared birthday is September 22nd. It's kind of like if you're a Harry Potter fan wanting to make sure you read Harry Potter starting on July 31st because it's Harry Potter's birthday. So um, we have friends who do a Hobbit party every year on the 22nd. I know I saw somebody doing a knit along that was ending on the 22nd that was a Lord of the Rings or Hobbit inspired knit along. And I don't remember who it was. So if you know who it was, will you please post down below? Because I think that's something I would like to join in the future. But I, I it was like something I saw in scrolling and I didn't, I wasn't smart enough to stop and take note of it and everything um, at the time. But those are such great fall 
reads. I mean, you've got all the Halloween-y vibes from Harry Potter and the back to school kind of vibes, right? Um, and then from Lord of the Rings, again, it's the time of year that it starts and there's so much description of the woods and the the trees and the leaves and the creeks and the rivers. And I don't know, it just feels very earthy and, and harvesty kind of, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's plenty of stuff that happens that isn't in the fall, but it just feels like a fall read to me. So absolutely love it. And I, I really love listening to both of those. Um, I have the Jim Dale, Harry Potter versions. I don't have Stephen Fry's narration. Um, and we've list, it, it's just kind of like, that's what we're used to. So we really want to listen to Jim Dale read it. Um, and then with, with, um, Lord of the Rings, I know a year, maybe two years ago, it's probably been two years ago. Um, Andy Circus did release, they released new audio versions with Andy Circus, who was the voice of Gollum. I'm reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy and I'm pretty sure the Hobbit as well. But I am such a fan of Rob Inglis, who sounds like an old fashioned Oxford Dawn in a smoking jacket reading to you by the fireplace with his Earl Grey tea. <laughs> just how he sounds and I just love it. It's very like, yeah, it's just so great. I really, really enjoy listening to him. And so I did listen to, I think, The Hobbit by Andy Serkis. But then immediately afterwards, I thought, yeah, I, I, I want to go back to Rob Inglis. Plus, Andy Serkis, he, he, I mean, he does so much of that, like, the roadie, the, the voices are all in his throat a lot. It almost like hurts my throat to listen to him sometimes. He's so talented, he's amazing, but yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm reading right now. And no, I have not finished Tale of Two Cities yet. So I will have to let you know. Have I talked to you about Tale of Two Cities? I'm pretty sure I did. Maybe I haven't. Well, if I haven't, I'll have to go back and look. If I haven't, I will next time because there's such good stuff in that book and such fun characters and knitting all combined. So anyway, I think I did. That's everything I have for you today. So I should be back again next week. Yay. <laughs> Huzzah for this time of year. It's just my favorite. It is much lighter. The burdens that I carry are lighter at this time of year, and it makes it so much easier for me to just spend time like this with you. So I will be back next week. Um, don't forget to comment and share what you, your essentials for your romanticized knitting experience. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you would subscribe and hit like, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.